Today, I'm going to teach you how to create your own t-shirt design using a vector file. And I'm also going to show you how you can share that design with your friends or your family, your followers on your social channels. Hey guys, and welcome to the channel. If you are new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the notification button so that, so that you don't miss videos that I post on a weekly basis. And also, I just want to thank you for joining and tuning in with me. And if you are not new here and you are returning, I also want to say thank you to you as well, because I can tell that you are getting value from my videos and I thank you for continuing to come back. So as I said, we are going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to create your own t-shirt and I'm going to show you how to post it on your social channel. So that way, if you want to get feedback from your followers or your subscribers to see what they think in reference to the design you just created and see, you know, how far that t-shirt will go and see if it will sell. If you are wanting to start your own t-shirt company, your own t-shirt brand, I will link a link to a video that I have that teaches you all about what you would need to start up your own t-shirt business. So that will be up in the corner here and you can take a look at that. So we are going to go ahead and get started and jump right into this video. And I'm going to teach you guys what you need to know in creating your own t-shirt. So that way you don't have to continue to reach out to people and ask them to create your t-shirt when you can do it right from the comfort of your home. So we are going to start off by just grabbing this file here. And as I said, I'm going to show you how to do your t-shirt with a vector file. And the difference between a vector file and like a PNG or a JPEG is that a vector file comes automatically with great quality and it's not pixelated. So with JPEG and PNG, those files are pixelated. And if you start them off too small and try to make them bigger, when you stretch your design, you do end up getting like that pixelated effect. And that's why it doesn't look so great. Or when you go to send your designs to companies to for them to print it out, they will either tell you they can't use the file because it's pixelated or they'll just go ahead and ask you up front for a 300 DPI photo, which would be a good quality photo. With vector files, like I said, you get good quality photos straight off the bat. So you don't have to worry about converting it into like a DPI, like a 300 DPI because it's already good quality. And so this right here is a vector file that we are going to go ahead and... So this right here is a vector file that we are going to go ahead and use. And as you can see, this photo looks great. And this is the one we're going to use to print on our shirt. I do want to point out that Z Digitizing uh, converted my file into a vector file. They have wonderful designs also as well, but they do, if you have projects that you want to send to them, they can convert your files into a vector file as well as JPEGs and PNGs. They also have embroidery. Um, they do really well with that. So if you do have any embroidery needs, you can reach out to the digitizing for those needs as well. If it is your first time signing up with Z digitizing, you will get 50% off using my coupon code. So I'll go ahead and also leave that in the link below. If you want to give them a try, I promise you, you won't be disappointed. As you can see, they did this design right here for me, not the design, but they turned this into a vector file for me. So you might want to give them a try. Um, okay, so we have our file here. 
I don't really need to do anything to it because everything is done. As you can see, there are, every time I touch my images, you see how I get two purple squares, um, meaning like I can separate these files if I wanted to. So if I just wanted to use this cup right here, I can pull this cup from the image. Or if I wanted to pull any of these designs away from the image, I could do that, as you can see. Um, this will not be a tutorial on how to use Canva, so I'm not going to really go in too much detail on certain things in Canva. But I do have a video as well where I show you how to use Canva if you don't know how. And I'll also link that video in the uh, corner as well. But I'm going to duplicate this so you guys can see what I'm referring to when I say I can extract each one of these from each other. So if I wanted to see how I could just do these. So like if I wanted these cups right here on just the t-shirt alone, I can extract these from each other. So I wouldn't, I don't have to use the whole design. Um, or if I just wanted to pull this away, I could. And I could see how I can pick this apart. I could do anything I want to this. But if I don't want to do any of that and I want to keep this from moving all together, what I could go ahead and do is add this back to my design. And it's going to be messed up. It's not going to be as perfect as you've seen it. But I just want to point out and show you guys something. So I can send this back backward and put it behind. I can put it behind. Let me see. See, I can put that back where it was. And if I don't want this design to move around at all, I can actually group all these together and lock it in place. So now we just, as you can see, we just have one design. And none of this is going to be picked apart because I grouped it together. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to delete this and I'm going to go ahead and group this so that when I go to make my t-shirt, I don't have to worry about this file, this photo getting picked apart. So now that we have our file, we do want to go ahead and print this on a shirt. But before we do that, I'm going to show you guys, like, say if I have this file right here, right? I have this image and I want to share it with my followers on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. I can go right here to share on social and you see how they have all of these um, social channels that you can share this on. And so I can click any of these and share this image to my social and my viewers will see this and I can ask them their opinion on what do they think. So what I can do is I can. I can go to. Let me see. I can go to Facebook. And see right here, my Facebook is connected. If I wanted to create connect a new account, I could do that as well right here. But we don't want to do that because ours is already connected. So I'm going to go ahead and hit mine. See how it gives me a box where I can write something in. I can say to my viewers like, hey, guys. Hey, guys. I have a new design. Design. Let me know what you think. So you guys can word it any way you want to. This is just an example of me showing you how what you can do when you go ahead and share this file. So you can either schedule this post and the scheduling only comes with the paid version. It doesn't come with the free version. So if you do want to schedule it, you do have to you you do have to have a paid version. Um, so if I wanted to, I can schedule this for. Tomorrow, say, let's say like if I'm busy 
and I don't have time to, you know, sit around and wait for when I want to share this image. I can go ahead and schedule this image for Friday and I can schedule it for, let's say I want to schedule it for 10 o'clock. I can schedule it for 10 o'clock. I can hit done. So I, and then I can go ahead and hit schedule for this to drop tomorrow at 10 o'clock if I wanted to. If I don't want to do that, then as you can see, I can come out of this and I can publish it now. If I wanted to go ahead and just publish it now, I can publish it now. And if I hit publish, see my design is preparing and they're going to put it on my social for people to see. And then that way you can get a lot of feedback from your viewers to know if that shirt will sell or not. Then if I wanted to check it out, I can go to check out my post and we'll see that the image had posted. Um, let me see. See, as you can see, the image is here. What I wrote is here. Hey guys, I have a new design. Let me know what you think. And people can comment here and let you know what they think. So now that I have shown you guys that and published it, so we're going to go ahead and get this pressed on a shirt. I do want to show you guys something too. Like, let's say if you don't have a file of your own and you're not super creative, what you can do is I can go home. I can go back to my main screen. I can create a design. And go Canva also offers templates for t-shirts if you're not so creative or you're just having a brain fart and you don't know what to do in the moment. I can take any one of these images right here that Canva has already pre-populated and I can tweak these myself if I wanted to. I can tweak, tweak this myself and create my own shirt. See? And I just created a shirt. Um, one thing you cannot do, though, is you cannot use these files as is uh, because Canva does have copyrights. So you do want to just check that out to see if there is a copyright on it which it most likely is. So you want to change this up yourself. You don't want to copy the image exact to the T because I don't want you to get in trouble. But here are options. Canva has a lot of options for you to choose from when it comes to making a shirt. So now that I have shown you guys all of that, we are going to go ahead and jump into creating the shirt. So let's head over to the printer in the heat press all right so in this part of the video i'm just going to go ahead i'm print i had already printed out the design as you can see and we are going to go ahead and place this on the shirt i'm not going to go into full detail of how to sub the shirt or the uh settings and stuff that i use because i already have that in another video as you can see it was a successful print and that color looked it good. So now we're just going to go ahead and pull the moisture out of the shirt. So that way we can go ahead and get, lock that sublimation into the shirt. And you do want to use a roller on this part. I didn't, but it's best to use the lint roller to get the lint and stuff out of the shirt. And here, I know you guys were asking about this ruler wanting to know if the measurement was accurate. Yes, it is, it's very much accurate. And I wanted to show you that right here in this part to see the lineup. So now that you know that that ruler is accurate, we're gonna go ahead and continue with this shirt. Again, I will have a link up in the corner for you guys to see the details on how to actually sub the shirt. Those colors look beautiful. I'm loving the way that they're turned out. 
And I did want to let you guys know, I did do um, DTF print as well as a, um, sublimation. So here you see me doing the DTF print and I am just coating this image and so that I can cure it. Again, I'm not going to go into detail on how I do everything just because I already have a video for it and for the sake of time in this video. And that is the powder, the film, and also the sublimation paper that I use. All of those are a sub and I will leave the links down below for you guys to see um, which you can get them from Amazon here. This is the sublimation shirt that you see that I'm showing you and this is the DTF print that I'm now showing you that we are now pressing. We're just pulling out the moisture of the shirt and now we are laying our design down so that we can go ahead and press this shirt. So now I'm about to peel it. So you can see this is a cold peel as well. And this is also the DTF hack that I am using. Those colors look great. I love it. And that is the DTF that we just got done doing. And I am going to show you a comparison between the sublimation and the DTF. Here I am showing you the difference between the ASA, the um, sublimation and that's a poly shirt, 100%. And then I'm going to show you the DTF shirt that I did, um, DTF print on this shirt. And this is 100% cotton that I use for this shirt. Again, I showed you the sublimation and DTF. 